global cooling. A five degrees Celsius average drop in global temperature would have been devastating, causing Europe's summers to freeze and triggering a volcanic winter. Five degrees globally would translate into 15 degrees or so of summer cooling in the temperate to high latitudes. The effects on agriculture, on the growth of plants, on life in the oceans would be catastrophic. This global catastrophe would have continued for years, dramatically affecting life on Earth. But what impact did it have on humans? The answer may be buried not inside the ancient rocks, but deep within us all. Lynn Geordie and Henry Harpending are scientists specializing in human genetics. Since the early 1990s, they have been studying mitochondrial DNA, using the information to investigate mankind's past. Most of our genetic information is stored in the nuclei of our cells, but a small separate quantity exists in another component, the part which produces the cell's energy, the mitochondria. Mitochondria have their own genes. It's a small number of genes, a small amount of DNA, but it's distinct from the rest of the DNA in the cell. And because of the way mitochondria are transmitted from one generation to the next, they're, they're inherited only from the mother. So they give us a record of the maternal lineage of a population. Mitochondrial DNA is inherited only through the mother. All mutations are passed on from mother to child, generation after generation at a regular rate. Over time, the number of these mutations accumulate in a population. Every event that takes place in our past, every major event, a population increase, a population decrease, or the exchange of people from one population to another, changes the composition of the mitochondrial DNA in that population. So what happens is that we have a record of our past written in our mi mitochondrial genes. By knowing the rate of mutation of mitochondrial DNA, and by a complex analysis of the distribution of these mutations, the geneticists can estimate the size of populations in the past. Several years ago, they began seeing a strange pattern in their results. We expected that we would see a pattern consistent with a relatively constant population size. Instead, we saw something that departed dramatically from that expectation. We saw a pattern much more consistent with a dramatic reduction in population size at some point in our past. This confirmed what other geneticists have noticed. Given the length of time humans have existed, there should be a wide range of genetic variation. Yet DNA from people throughout the world is surprisingly similar. What could have caused this? The answer is a dramatic reduction of the population sometime in the past. A bottleneck. If we imagine the uh, population diagrammed like this, uh, in the distant past, back here, we had a large population, then a bottleneck looking like this, and then a subsequent enlargement of population size again. So we would have families of people in the distant past with a significant amount of genetic diversity. But when the bottleneck occurs, when there's a reduction in population size, perhaps only a few of those families would survive the bottleneck. We have a dramatic reduction in genetic diversity during this time when the population is very small. And then after the bottleneck, the people who, would we, who we would see today would be descendants only of those who survived. So they're going to be genetically much more similar to one another, reducing the amount of genetic variation. 
it seems so incredible. You know, the idea that all of us, you know, there's six billion people on Earth, and what the data were telling us was that we, you know, our species was reduced to you know, a few thousand. Suddenly, it hit us. We had something to say about human history. Our population may have been in such a precarious position that only a few thousand of us may have been alive on the whole face of the Earth at one point in time, that we almost went extinct, that some event was so catastrophic as to nearly cause our species to cease to exist completely. It is an astonishing revelation, but the key was to find out when and why it happened. Because mitochondrial DNA mutates at an average rate, these scientists believe, controversially, that they can narrow down the date of the bottleneck. Mutations in the mitochondria take place with clock-like regularity. So the number of mutations give us a clock, essentially, that we can use to approximately date the major event. In the case of a population bottleneck, we think that this would have occurred roughly 70 to 80,000 years ago, give or take some number of thousands of years. As for what caused this dramatic reduction in population, the geneticists had no idea. 